Oh, it's a good day to die, isn't it? Do you know that you were sentenced to death? Speaking of good day to die, we're all sentenced to death. We were sentenced to death before we were born again, and we're still sentenced to death even after we're born again. That means we live a life of denying self so that we can live the life of Christ. Amen? Would you turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3? Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all of our what? Tribulation. Anybody going through something? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> no need to. You're still on the burn. <laughs> who comforts us in all of our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. So how are you going to learn to comfort someone? You're going to have to go through the same stuff. Amen? See, the problem is that people run from the trial and tribulation when it's God trying to train us. Verse 5, For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounds through Christ. Now, if we are afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effective for the enduring the same sufferings which we also suffer. Or if we are comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope for you is steadfast, because we know that you are partakers of the sufferings, so also you will partake of the consolation. For we do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were burdened beyond measure, above strength, so that we despaired even of life. Yes, we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead who delivered us from so great a death and does deliver us in whom we trust that he still delivers us. You also helping together in prayer for us that thanks may be given by many persons on our behalf for the gift granted to us through many. The counseling, the con consolation, the consoling from Christ as our comforter. The flesh is sentenced to death, yet we, through the emotional drama, <laughs> battle all the time. Amen? <laughs> the flesh loves to revive itself, justify itself, and restore itself in false humility. And, and in this, the flesh of self is battling against the new man. The flesh serves darkness. Amen? But the flesh had to be sentenced to death. So as for you and I are led by the Spirit of God, our flesh is crucified. So there's that process where we're always being led by the Spirit of God so that your flesh can maintain its sentence of death. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 13. And since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your, for your training. That grace, God's plan, having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing. Why? Because it's been sentenced to death. Yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, I said light affliction, which is but for a moment, 
some people like to carry them on forever, is working for us. It's what? Working for us, a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. In other words, he's saying all things work for your training to promote God's plan in a dead body. Afflicted, wounded, offended, rejected, discouraged, disrespected, humiliated. Look at what Jesus went through. God knows it all to check the motives of desire and the level of discerning influence. In other words, your level of discerning influence. What is your level of the discerning of the influence? He knows it all. See, this is where we got to know that God knows it all no matter what we're going through. It doesn't matter. He knows everything that's going on. So many times people don't get that. Then they go into survival mode. Then they start fighting for their life and the, and, and the flesh comes back alive again and it's supposed to be sentenced to death and maintain death. God knows it all. So no matter what is going on, it could be an accident, it could be anything. He knows what's going on. He wants to know what you're going to do with it. He wants to know how you're going to handle it. He wants to know whether you're going to fight for yourself or fight for what's righteous. Amen? He is looking for those that are willing to exchange their life for his. Hallelujah. Was Jesus sentenced to death? And what makes us any better? Hallelujah. Hebrews 12, verse 3. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your soul. You have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin, and you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons and daughters. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, God deals with you with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are what? Illegitimate. And not sons means you're generic, not genetic. Furthermore, we have, ha have had human fathers who corrected us and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? For they indeed for a few days chasten us and seem best for them, to them. But he for our profit, that we may be partakers of his holiness, his righteousness, his character. Now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been what? Trained by it. So you've got to allow every challenge, everything that happens in your life to be a training session. It's got to be a training session. Are you going to react and quit and be a wimp? Let the enemy push you out of position because something occurred? Or are you going to fight and maintain and receive the full award, reward? Amen? Oh, happy day. Chastening comes whether you are wrong or whether you are right. <laughs> it's what you do with it that gains or diminishes God's favor and trust. So sometimes we, well, what did I do wrong? It's not whether you did something wrong or you did something right. God's going to chasten us no matter what. So you're going to find yourself in certain things and I thought, man, I just don't get it, man. What's happening? Why is this all, all of a sudden, what the heck? What the snap it? And, and again, it's chastening of the Lord because he loves us. It's all a part of the training. This life and this planet is nothing but a training session. For when we leave here, there's another position waiting. 
But this is what we've got to see things through. That's why it's temporary. What you do here is affecting you eternally. Hello? <laughs> Second Corinthians 6, verse 1. We then, as workers together with him, also plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in an acceptable time I have heard you, in a day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is an accepted time. Behold, now is a day of salvation. We give no offense in anything that our ministry may not be blamed. But in all things we commend ourselves as ministers of God in much what? Patience, in tribulation, in needs, in distresses, in stripes, imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in sleeplessness, in fasting, by purity, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Spirit, by sincere love, by the word of truth, by the power of God, and by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and being, as what? Dying, and behold, we live, as chastened and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing yet possessing all things. Why? Because we are blessed are you spiritual blessing. We are seated in heavenly places, and we are more than conquerors. Give no offense in anything, knowing the value of God's testing. It's to allow the true you to be exposed. The true you. James chapter 1, verse 2. My brethren, call, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, not if. Amen? When. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience or endurance. But let that patience have its perfect work. You must allow that trial, tribulation, have its perfect work in us. If you do not allow that appointed time in that area of that trial and tribulation to be completed in you, you will miss what God is trying to train you for. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Does anyone here want to lack anything? No. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose he will receive anything from the Lord. He's double-minded, unstable in all his ways. Let the lowly brother glory in his exaltation, but the rich in humiliation, because as a flower of the field he will pass away. Patience is the response of knowing the Lord. Knowing the Lord what? That he sees all. See, when you know that he sees it all, knows it all, and he's working things out to the good, you have nothing to worry about. Amen? That gives you the patience. That gives you the ability to endure. We need endurance in everything we do. He knows. He sees it all. Knows all. And he chooses all things for our best interest. But he wants us not to react. <laughs> he wants us to respond. Amen? Praise God. See, when people react, um, even in an area of offense, anger, hatred, Things to that degree, reacting towards something that occurred instead of responding towards, that's all it's doing is bringing the flesh back alive. That's all it does. 
It brings the flesh back alive. Why? Because there's an area inside that says, how dare you do this to me? That's pride. How can this happen to me? Oh, that's me, myself, and I. See, this is where God is bringing us through the test. <laughs> See, that's where people are still fighting for their lives. We weren't supposed to be dead. Amen? Patience is the response of knowing the Lord sees it all, knows all, chooses all for our best interest. But to react is the offense side of protecting the sentence of death to the flesh. It's protecting it, not promoting it. In Romans 6, verse 5. For if we have been united together in the likeness of Jesus' death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. He who has died has been freed from sin. But if we died with Christ, we believe we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died for sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be what? Dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin or the presence of evil reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in its lust. Do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead. Again, alive from the dead. Hmm. And your instruments and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but you are under the plan. Amen. You are under grace. Be dead to sin, but alive to Christ. And don't let evil presence take dominion through emotional choices. Hebrews 10, verse 32. But recall the former days in which after you were illuminated, you endured a great struggle with sufferings. Partly while you were made a spectacle, both by reproaches and tribulations, and partly while you became companions of those who were tr so treated. For you had compassion on me, and my chains, and joyfully accepted the plundering of your goods, knowing that you have a better and enduring possession for yourselves. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has what? Great reward. For you are in need of what? Endurance. Hmm. So that after you've done the will of God or your assignment, you may receive the what? Promise or the reward. For yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but those who believe in the saving of the soul. Completely. Completing the assignments. Amen? You receive the reward. That's the re assignment, right? When God puts you on something to do, especially in the training sessions, so all tribulations and trials are associated with training. Those are assignments by God. Sometimes we don't volunteer for those things, do we? <laughs> in fact, I haven't heard anyone volunteer for one of those. Anybody want to volunteer for suffering today? Hallelujah. <laughs> Colossians 3, verse 1. Col 
then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are what? Above. See, sometimes God will bring something in our lives to reconnect us to the things because we're not seeking enough things above. We're seeking more things of the earth. Seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your thoughts on the things above and not on the things of the earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Now again, he is our life. We no longer have a life. We were bought with a price. So we don't want to try to get our life back. Amen? We want to keep a life surrendered to God in exchange all the time. We want our life, our old life, to be dead so that the new life of Christ can be resurrected. But it can't, he can't get that and hold that position in our life unless we are willing to be sentenced to death. Amen? Therefore, in verse 5, Put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old man with his deeds. And have put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free. But Christ is all and in all. You died, sentenced to death. If we live in the flesh, <laughs> we're still sentenced to death. Amen. Whether you live in the spirit or in the flesh, you're still sentenced to death. It doesn't matter. The flesh must be constant death. So even when we were living in the flesh, it was sentenced to death. We're living in the spirit. The flesh is still sentenced to death. Amen? No matter what. Colossians 2, verse 20. Therefore, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world, why as though living in the world do you subject yourselves to regulations? Do not touch, do not taste, do not handle, which all concern things which perish with the using, according to the commandments and doctrines of men. These things indeed have an appearance of wisdom and self-imposed religion, false humility and neglect of the body, but are of no value against the indulgence of the flesh. Hallelujah. If we got to die from the basic principles of the world's way of life. I don't know if you heard or not, but they've been trying to give the children now. Well, they went to court and the judge required every speck of information what's in the and why did they want to give them to children? I'm telling you, there's more and more things that are happening right now. See, we're, the basic principles of the world is the, the ruling of the world system. We're not subject to that. We're submissive to God Almighty. We are, we are under authority of the government of the eternal kingdom of Christ. It doesn't mean you go around and break laws, amen, in, this, in the world. <laughs> Laws are made for keeping people safe. But there are certain moral laws, ethic laws, principles that are from God that are much higher standard than what the world has to offer. Amen? In Romans 8, 12. Therefore, brethren, we are 
debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you're going to die. But if by the Spirit you put to death, you see that? The deeds of the body, you will live. So the flesh is sentenced to death no matter what. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but the, you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Hallelujah. For the earnest expectation of creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to fertility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Now that's around the corner. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within, our, within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we, ha if we, ha but if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with what? Perseverance, endurance. Why? Because we're living from the future, not from the past. Amen? 2 Corinthians 3, verse 12. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech, unlike Moses, who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. But their what? Minds, their thoughts were blinded, manipulated. For until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil was taken away in the anointing of Christ Jesus. But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their hearts. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. When one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Freedom. Now listen. It says when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. In other words, there's freedom. Turns to the Lord, not the phone. Amen. <laughs> not your banker. <laughs> not your friend. Not your boss. Not your pastor. Not anyone. You turn to the Lord. You turn to the Lord first. Not the phone, not the throne. Go to the throne. Amen? When someone turns, when you're going through stuff, do not go to the phone. Go to the throne. When things are going on, don't call people. Go to the Lord. Amen? That's what he says. Turn to the Lord. And only where the Spirit of the Lord is freedom. So it's the Spirit of the Lord that's going to guide you to the freedom, amen, to victory. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty or there's freedom. But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in the mirror, the glory of the Lord, are being transferred into the same image from glory to glory, just as the Spirit of the Lord. Again, no matter what you're going through, it's training. God knows the end. He's the one that's allowed it to happen. And no matter whether you're self-inflicted or not, he's going to allow it to turn to the good. Amen? So don't be running the people. Amen? Look, you go to the Lord first. When you go to the Lord first, you wait for direction. When you're waiting on the Lord, he's going to renew your strength. You're going to get a clear answer if you'll wait long enough. Have you ever... Regretted something you did? Don't raise your hands. When you realize the next day, it's like, gosh, if I would just waited 24 hours, things would have been a little bit different. 
<laughs> I really made a real jerk out of myself. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have thought that. Gosh, you know. Again, if we'd have just waited 24 hours, one day, things would have been totally different. The outcome would have been totally different. <laughs> but of course, many of us haven't done that. But we're being trained to do that now, right? <laughs> now that we're bringing, now that means that we're going to make less mistakes, we're going to make better choices. And we're going to earn God's trust more. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm going to close this 2 Corinthians 4 in verse 7, please. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus may also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is working in us, but life in you. Wow. Death is working in us, but life in you. Remember, we have been sentenced to death. That's the only way you have resurrection life. That's when we begin to take our life back that we lose resurrection power. Because we're allowing now the flesh to take dominion. Again, whether you're in the flesh or in the spirit, the flesh is still sentenced to death no matter what. Let everything remember its training. Okay, no matter what's happened, self-inflicted, right, wrong, no matter what's going on. You lose your job, you lose this, you lose that, you gain this, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. It's got nothing to do with right or wrong. It's God training us in everything we're doing right now. Everything is preparation. See, the enemy always wants to bring you to you and go, you did this. You did something wrong. And then he beats you up. Then you feel unworthy. Look at everyone is going to make a mistake. Amen? Every day. There isn't one day you haven't made some kind of a mistake. And don't blame somebody else for your mistake. Hello. Or your laziness, or whatever it may be. <laughs> Amen? God will turn it. He'll expose it. But remember, everything is about training. There's something much more important besides this planet. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We're honored and blessed. We thank you for your encouragement tonight because we sure do need it. All, everything around us is sinking sand, but we're on solid ground with you. So, Lord, as we go through these trials and tribulations and the burn, help us to see that we're being trained. You know it all, the beginning and the end. Grant us the power and authority to make the right decision that's pleasing to you so that your name will be glorified in every choice in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.